You're thinking about building a small form factor PC, huh? Maybe a cute little micro ATX to fit on your desk just a little bit better. Maybe a mini ITX that'll barely be noticeable amidst the rest of the clutter on your setup. Don't lie, you have clutter just like me. I get it. Size is a huge reason to go small form factor, but let's talk about what you're actually signing up for because fair warning, if you want this cute little powerhouse on your desk, you're gonna be paying for it in a few types of ways. Either way, I built my first micro ATX streaming and gaming PC last week. So I'm going to put that video up here so that you can watch me struggle through it. Either way, cheers to keeping the PC small, but just as strong as our drinks. Now, first off, part selection just went from an all you can eat buffet to a little more like fine dining. You've got to be a little bit more picky. Not every component is going to fit in this case that you're getting, which means your future upgrade plans are gonna take a hit as well. Want a top tier GPU? It might fit after you negotiate it with a crowbar. So if you're set on a small form factor, make sure that you're okay with slightly fewer options just across the board. For this PC that I built, I went with the Lian Li A3 case, the Asus Z790M Plus Prime motherboard, the Intel i9-12900K, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM, the Asus RTX 4070 Super Dual Evo, the Lian Li ALC 3060 AIO, and the Corsair RM750E power supply. And of course, the PC part picker link will be down in the description. I think another thing to mention is that this part selection issue that you're gonna have to be dealing with is going to extend to other parts as well. No space for five extra hard drives. You'll be lucky to get an extra SSD or two in there. Need more room for accessories or things like add-ons. You're better off just buying a USB hub and probably calling it a day. Not to mention, you're gonna have to think about this and measure every time you want to upgrade. The options are just going to be a little bit more limited and you're probably going to pay a little bit extra if that's the only motherboard that's going to fit in your case. If you want the white GPU to match the white aesthetic, but they don't make one that fits in the case, you're just kind of out of luck at that point. Now, while I'm just mentioning things, I wanted to mention cable management. <sighs> now, immediately after I built in this small Lee and Lee case, I built in a height Y70. Now, let me tell you about some of the differences here. Um, I mean, it's not impossible to build in these smaller cases. It is just a lot more difficult. And when I mean a lot more difficult, I think I more mean a lot, a lot more tedious. There's a bunch of things that are a lot smaller, take a lot more dexterity, things that you put in there and then you realize that you needed to cable manage that first. You screw in the fans and realize you needed to put that fan in first. When I was building in the height Y70, just a massive case, none of that was a worry. I could literally put the motherboard in and put all of the other components in, take any of them out without having to move any of the other pieces. Cable management in that case was actually kind of fun to do. Not only was it just a little bit harder to build with, but I needed things like tweezers and uh, at one point needle nose pliers just to reach something that in any other case, my hands would have fit in that spot just fine. Not to mention, be prepared for creative workarounds. Sometimes that cable that would have been fine in a larger case just isn't gonna fit trying to plug in the SATA cable that came with the motherboard just 
wouldn't fit in this case. Luckily, I scrounged around in some of the extra SATA cables I had. I found a cable that was actually smaller on the end so that it would fit in the space that I needed it to fit. Be ready to become a little bit more creative if the first option doesn't work out. And the last thing I really wanna talk about is gonna be heat. When it comes to small form factor builds, we're not playing around with this, right? You've got less space, which means less air that is going to help you cool your build. Make sure that you've got enough fans, make sure that they are all pointed in the right direction. Most of these bigger cases, you could just throw some fans in there. And even if they're not perfectly aligned, it's gonna work out just fine. But in these kinds of cases, fans pointing in the right directions, open builds, mesh panels are all going to be your best friends. Make sure to keep that in mind when you're picking not only your case, your fans, but also your components. You might consider some parts like the CPU and the GPU that have a little bit lower TDP options. Something like an i5 paired with a 4060 Ti rather than an i9-14900K paired with a 4090 and hoping that your new little PC doesn't explode. So yeah, building a small form factor PC wasn't exactly smooth sailing, but it's kind of like putting a ship in a bottle. You need the right parts, you need some of the right plans, and a big heap of patience. But once you've got it all built and it's sitting there compact, but still super powerful on your desk, it can be worth it if that's what you're looking for. If you're thinking about trying a build like this on your own, let me know down in the comments. But otherwise, if you wanna see the stream that I built in the massive Height Y70 case, I'll leave that link up here. Good luck on building and we'll see you in the next one.